How's it going, guys? My name's Jose, aka Jove Engineer, with a quick project here for you guys for your air-cooled Porsche 911 uh, up until model year 1989. Um, we're going to be re replacing the fuse panel uh, from the old OE bullet style fuses to the uh, more modern uh, blade style uh, fuses simply to increase the reliability of the um, electrical system and have less uh, you know electrical gremlins or random things happening due to the you know sketchiness of the old uh, uh, bullet style fuses that uh, uh, came on the car from the factory. This should be really easy quick um, project that you can do in a couple of hours so uh, if you're still in quarantine you can knock it out or if you're you know have a free afternoon uh, you can uh, you should be able to knock this out pretty quickly the unit that we'll be installing today is uh, an adapt motorsport unit that uh, has the modern blade style fuses the little mini blade fuses and uh, it has the included uh, headlight relays, so it should clean up some of the wiring up front. It's got the, the front panel, and in addition it also comes with the, the small panel in the back in the engine compartment. This process is pretty, pretty generic, so um, I think this should be valid for this unit as well as the classic retrofit or any other um, straight replacement for the factory style um, fuse panel where all the fuse locations are the same as a factory and this just simply replaces them with the updates them with the newer style units so step one of this process is to clean out your trunk take everything out including the carpet and uh, you know give yourself a nice clean area to to work in in case uh, you drop hardware or anything in here and additionally disconnect the ground terminal on the battery. Take the cover off. And in general, what we're gonna do is since the new unit is literally a direct replacement of this unit, what we're gonna do is take the all the wires and label them um, you know, based on their factory locations. I think this is fuse one through 21. So I'm gonna label these, label all the wires and that go through each fuse, 1T, 2T, 3T, 4T, 5T, 6T, etc., all the way to 21T, meaning uh, the fuse number and top. Label the bottom wires, 1B, 2B, 3B, 4B, etc., uh, meaning the number of the fuse on the bottom so that when I pull the panel out the wires are all grouped together and I can put them back in one by one back in the same locations that they originally were. Also it's good to take as many pictures as you possibly can especially if there's something tricky that is uh, tough to label like a jumper or something hidden behind um, you know something that's just not easy to you know that might throw you off um, additionally, here I have a headlight relay kit that I will have to delete um, because the new panel already has the headlight relays kind of in this location here. So what I will need to do here before starting is to delete the headlight relay kit, remove it from the positive terminal, kind of return it back to stock, um, uninstall it if you will and then start to label all my wires. For reference, it's good to have something like the Bentley manual so that you can see the, the fuse panel locations and be able to track them and know what um, each fuse does just to kind of uh, you know keep that in the back of your mind as you're going through the, the labeling. And should you run into any, any wiring issues, um, after you install the panel or if you just want to double check something before you put it back in the into the new panel it's good to have the factory uh, wiring diagrams I have um, 
some printed out copies here that I that have um, all kinds of notes on them but uh, you should only need these if um, something something has been modified on your panel and it doesn't look stock before starting make sure that you have plenty of light in here that everything is nice and clean um, I'll be labeling the wires with just blue painters tape and a sharpie and if uh, you know some of these wires are so short and uh, stiff and kind of tend to want to do whatever they want and I don't want to risk having them bundled up with tape and then them slipping out of the uh, their respective groups so if necessary you can grab um, grab zip ties and zip tie them together temporarily so that um, they stay put and then as you put them back in each location then uh, you can remove the zip tie and the tape and pop them back in also I'm wearing latex gloves the cheapest kind simply because um, I tend to always bang my knuckles into things and uh, you know just to keep my hands nice and clean so it's just kind of a normal practice of mine but you don't have to do that if you don't want to first as I stated earlier disconnect the negative terminal from the battery then if you have a headlight relay kit already on here uh, make sure to remove that from the positive terminal on the battery and uh, remove the ground and disconnect the wires and return the uh, headlight wiring back to the way it was that way when you start to uh, label the wires um, everything is the way it's supposed to be to loosen the fuse panel and get access to all of the the wiring remove these two screws from the top this screw down here and this screw over here and make sure you don't drop the standoff that is uh, behind here so now I've disconnected the relay kit there it is and I've returned the headlight wires back to the original locations if you never had a relay kit then this is your starting point now we can start to remove this and um, label and uh, disconnect all the wires if you notice there are three separate fuse blocks one of them is here held on by two screws right there another one is here about that long also held on by two screws and this last one has three with um, two screws behind it so go block by block removing them and label the wires as I'm going through this here are my findings so far I put this bolt back up here loosely uh, top front bolt just so that this um, panel stays up and doesn't fall down and it just gives me a little bit better access to things I'm labeling this is wire 1T these are 2T that I ended up removing because they were um, kind of stiff zip tied them together you don't have to do this but it helps me 3T 4T no 5 6T, no 7, 8T. I'll repeat the same process on the bottom. And right now all these relays are kind of getting in the way and they'll probably continue to get in the way when I uh, put the, tuck the wires back in so I'm gonna remove them so that um, um, I have better access. Everything is labeled on this first panel. Uh, wires one through eight T. Uh, 1 through 8B so now I can disconnect all the wires and remove the panel and um, repeat the process for the remainder of the fuses some things to keep in mind while you're doing your labeling uh, and wire identification are uh, different kinds of jumpers for example this big red wire here is a jumper that goes from position at least on my box from 11T over to 16T. Also, there are a couple of more jumpers here that are, uh, looks like they're made out of copper strips that are um, screwed into the top of the fuse terminals. There's one, a jumper here uh, in the shape of a U 
that goes between this fuse and this fuse. There's another one here that goes between here and here. So take note of those jumpers that will have to come out when um, the wiring in the panel uh, comes out. Uh, we'll have to check to see if those jumpers are already included into the circuit board on the new panel or if they need to be moved over to the, the new panel. Speaking of jumpers, some of these are built into the, the panel uh, itself. For example, this is fuses uh, 1 through 8 that we first removed. And uh, you can see there's an internal jumper here and here built into the back of the panel. And if you look at the factory diagrams, for example, those locations correspond to the headlights. Here's fuse 5, 6, 7, and 8. There is, you can see there's a jumper here between 5 and 6, and another jumper between 7 and 8. Fuses 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So there should be a jumper here, and another one here. If you flip it over, 5 and 6 are jumped, and 7 and 8 uh, are jumped as well. Second and third panel all labeled up. Now we're going to go ahead and remove the second sub panel. As you're removing some of this hardware, like the screws holding on the panels, there are a lot of little nooks and crannies in here where you can lose hardware between the, the fuel tank and uh, the body. So make sure you have one of these magnets on a stick so that you can retrieve any anything that falls in there, or rather to prevent it from falling in there to begin with. Second panel released. And the third panel released. Now that you have all of your fuse blocks removed, this is the best access that you'll get to any of the wires that um, uh, fit around the fuse uh, screw terminals. So go through and make sure that all of the connections are nice and clean. Um, if any of them are, you know, corroded or burnt burnt to a crisp, if there's enough length then maybe now's a good time to cut it off and expose a little bit of new copper wire to go into the screw terminal. Some of these have the factory for rules crimped on, some of these do not, they're just uh, copper, exposed copper strands. I'm going to leave them, leave all of them the way they are and just make sure that there's enough clean material on there to, to make a solid connection in each screw terminal. Also, a mental note, these relay sockets, if any of them look like that, that means they've uh, overheated and melted at some point, and uh, they will probably need to get replaced um, soon enough. So I'll put that on my list of things to do. And the new fuse panel that will go on here has a foam rubber uh, spacer that will go on this mounting surface uh, and it has uh, one side is adhesive back then it will stick on here so wipe this surface down with um, a paper towel and uh, alcohol to get rid of any dirt that's on there before sticking on the foam spacer. Before we install the new fuse panel let's take a quick look at how the OE fuse panel is laid out. Uh, here's a diagram of the OE panel. As you know, it was broken up into three three different fuse blocks, um, otherwise known as fuses 1 through 21 in this diagram, which is how I laid them out. Um, and I labeled all the wires 1 through 21, top and bottom. Here's the OE fuse panel, and here's the cover the way it sits in the uh, front trunk. When you take it out, 
it has a legend in here to tell you um, which views what the location and value and purposes of each fuse. If you look at these, the cover numbers them one, two, and three. One, two, three. Then again, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten for the second block. And as you can imagine, for this last block of eight, again, fuses one through eight. I don't know why they did it like this. I imagine that um, on the early cars, there are less fuses, then they kept adding more and more as the cars got more and more electrically complex. But that's how that's how you can relate um, the cover to these fuses and how to um, read them here as well as look at the um, the locations and uh, you know, cross-reference what each fuse does in the manual. Now the new fuse panel as you can see is numbered the exact same way. One, two, and three correspond to one, two, three. And then once again, the numbering starts one through 10 for the next block. And then for the last block of eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, plus 12 uh, power for the, for the headlight relays, which are wired internally. And according to the instructions, this is an extra slot in here for an accessory, maybe for, you know, good location to wire up your stereo or, or uh, an amplifier or something. Another thing to note is these blocks screw directly into the metal um, fuse and relay holder in the trunk. And uh, these are some kind of a phenolic material. And as you can see, the actual copper contacts are recessed. So even though this is screwed into up against the metal panel, they don't short out because they are, um, there's a gap. Um, however, this new fuse panel is essentially a big circuit board. And it has the um, contacts soldered in the back. So if you were to screw this directly onto the panel, then they would short out. So in order to mitigate that, there is a, there's a couple of things. There's this big uh, foam, foam spacer that I mentioned earlier sticks to the back of the, um, the metal uh, panel in the trunk. And additionally, the mounting scre screws have uh, standoffs to also keep the fuse panel physically spaced. Um, a fixed distance away from the, the metal uh, mounting plate. So this seems pretty straightforward. I should be able to follow this sequence um, just like the OE fuses. These are fuses 1 through 21 as I pointed out before. So I can go 1 through 21 ignoring the power supply for the uh, relays headlight relays and ignoring this first one as well and it should be a straight uh, uh, swap, direct swap in. Another feature I forgot to point out is that the new panel has all of these jumpers, both the external ones and the internal ones built into the circuit board so there's no need to move these over.